Good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever it is you're listening, and welcome to episode 7 in series 1 of The Captain's Vlog, a podcast published by fierceturtle.co.uk and aimed um, primarily at um, potential or existing crew in training for the Clipper Around the World Yacht Race. Uh, this podcast is entirely separate from uh, the Clipper Race, Clipper Ventures and Clipper Training and it's an independent vlog by a me, um, an ex-2011-12 Around the World crew and also um, temporary 13-14 interim race skipper. I also work uh, from time to time as a freelance uh, training skipper and I'm a Yacht Master Instructor Ocean. Um, getting into this, this is the last in the sort of uh, mini series if you like of this series one podcast relating to the pros and cons which is a continuation of the pros and cons blogs for legs one to four of the clipper race which i had done some time ago and whenever i see crew in training they always bend my ear and say well yeah that's interesting but i'm doing leg five or i'm doing leg six and you haven't said the pros and cons to those so at very long last i am uh, addressing that and i'm doing it by way of a podcast uh, why am I doing it by podcast? Well, I'm finding that with time being limited and the the blog and the vlog being um, really just bits of fun, um, it's not something that I can spend too much time on. And whilst I enjoy doing it, um, writing uh, long missives, I find a lot harder than just uh, rattling off my thoughts uh, fairly quickly. And so um, that's what I've chosen to do. Anyway, without further ado, to get into the last of the um, of this mini series, um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about Round the Worlder. So, if you're a Round the Worlder, you are effectively signed up, as the name suggests, to go all the way around the world on your race boat. And to do that um, as a Round the World crew is is one heck of an achievement. Simply crossing an ocean or racing one of these boats competitively is an achievement all in its own right seeing far-flung parts of the world is obviously hugely exciting to anybody with half of a soul and um, the whole event um, dealing with people building a team camaraderie personal relationships that will stay with you for a very long time to come some hopefully mostly for good but also sometimes for bad it's um, uh, you're you've got plenty of you living in an, a competitive environment in challenging conditions sometimes at the edge of your comfort zone and so um, personal relationships are strained, they're forged through that strain. And um, as an ex around the world on the 11-12, I really cannot recommend the whole experience highly enough. That said, it's not easy by any means, which is, of course, why it makes the whole thing worthwhile, like anything else in life. And um, here I just want to address one or two of the bits and pieces, many of them. Uh, probably have been addressed in the previous blogs uh, leg by leg um, both on fierceturtle.co.uk and also on YouTube on the Fierce Turtle, Fierce Turtle channel and also um, on the uh, Anchor FM podcast under Captain's Vlog so however you're listening to this if you've heard any of the other episodes some of that what I'm about to say will have been covered leg by leg in those vlogs or in the blogs on Fierce Turtle um, so freestyling is a little bit let's have a think about advantages and disadvantages of around the world um, well obviously I think there's far more advantages than disadvantages I I was going to say I loved every minute of it I don't think that would be fair I didn't love every minute of it some of it was damn hard some of it I, I felt like uh, I'd had enough um, thankfully those bits are always overshadowed by the good bits and um, in my experience at least um, I never felt I wanted to get off the boat or, or, or chuck it in. Um, and those few times when perhaps toward the end of the race, I really felt, oh, God, I, you know, I've seen enough ocean, thank you very much. Um, just the pig-headedness of wanting to achieve um, something pretty special, i.e. circumnavigate the planet, and to finish what you started. Um, those things just um, kept me going through those times where, you know, for whatever reason, you're just feeling a bit, low or tired or uh, running low on energy so um, yes it's difficult um, 
not only because physically you're at sea for a long period of time through the year, that is difficult, but you do get fitter as you go. Um, emotionally, it's difficult if you've got loved ones away and you're not able to see them. Then, of course, you know, you're away from home for a long time and you're away from home in fairly inhospitable conditions in a fairly brutal or basic environment, um, living out of a damp bunk most of the time. Um, when you are alongside or ashore, you're in a, in a, in a foreign environment. Um, you may or may not uh, have a lot of time to yourself, depending on how much time needs to be spent on the boat. And as a round-the-world crew, to a large extent, you're going to be lent on. Uh, and I, I mean that in the nicest possible way. I don't mean... Um, um, uh, lent on and uh, and um, bullied. Uh, no, you're going to be lent on by the team, by the skipper, to make sure that the boat is always in good condition. It's maintained, repaired, sailed in port for sponsorship events. Um, leggers will also have to do that, um, of course. But as a round-the-world crew, you will gain skills and you will be required more and more to do some of the more important skills normally around the world is end up doing most of the vittling the shopping and what have you of course a very important part of safely crossing an ocean there's no tesco locals uh, in the middle of the north pacific so you've got to get that right and the skipper is going to be under an awful lot of other time constraints so he will or she will to a very large extent have to trust key members of the team to do their job properly um, obviously, the, the skipper is there to support and advise, but it is a team sport, and that's both alongside and at sea. Um, engineering, sail repair. Sail, sail repair is obviously an important part of a yacht race. Um, engineering to you know, fixing things. You, there is a, a dedicated and experienced maintenance team who are fantastic, but they've got 11 boats to deal with. So um, you are going to be required to do a lot of the maintenance yourself, again, guided by and assisted by the maintenance team on more specific uh, specialist projects uh, where the skills don't exist within the team. Um, also, you're, it's, I mean, it's fantastic to be part of this circus going around the world. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, um, the clipper bubble, some people used to refer to it as, and it, and it is just incredible. It's great fun. It's also um, relentless. It's non-stop, both the skippers and the crew and the clipper staff. It is once the race... Well, for the clipper staff, the race never really finishes because the next race is being planned during the previous race or before. So it's a massive project that logistically is just a huge challenge for those involved. And there's so many different bits of string that have to be pulled together. And, you know, what, five or six hundred people have got to be coordinated. It, it it requires you to take ownership, and especially as around the world. You can't sit back on your laurels and just go, oh, well, you know, tell me where I've got to be, what I've got to do. You have to take ownership. And if you don't take ownership, I'd say that's probably the biggest, the biggest problem as around the world. If you do not put everything into your race, you will not get everything out of it. And the less you put in, um, the less you will be rewarded. It's a cliche, I know, but it's so true. It is so true. And that goes for leggers too. But around the world, of course, it's, a, it's almost an entire year of your life, plus all the lead up to it, the training, preparation in prep week, all that sort of stuff. So as around the world, it's a full commitment. It's a commitment of time, energy, um, you know, things still happen at home. You've got to be able to deal with that. Um, hopefully nothing too significant is going to happen. Um, but um, you have to think, well, you know, I'm away at the moment. I've got commitments to the boat. And, um, yeah, you, you, you um, life still happens at home. So you've got to have to plan around that. If you've got loved ones, partners that you want to fly out to various stops, if you can afford to do that, that's a great idea. And it's obviously a big thank you to your partner or your loved one who is letting you go off and do this um this thing which is hugely impressive but also hugely um well selfish really if you're leaving partners and family at home you know you, you are taking time for yourself so um uh it's worth planning that um what else in terms of the race start the great thing about being around the world or a leg one crew member is that you are 
almost certainly going to be involved in the preparation for race start because you'll be there. I think anybody that can be there should be there because there's lots of stuff needs to be done on the boat in preparation for the race start. So the prep week um, and in the weeks leading up to it, any involvement that you can offer, um, any help you can offer your team will be much appreciated both by the team and by the skipper in particular. And it's hugely valuable. The race has already started in my view. Um, I think um, the race really starts at your level one training, personally your individual race uh, and the same rules apply put everything into it that you can after level four the focus goes very much towards the race and the skipper is going to be delegating jobs and and um, requiring your help so whoever is your skipper give them that assistance as around the world that you're going to be relied upon um, more so by the skipper um, doesn't mean that it uh, in any way devalues those that are only doing a single leg. Um, you will bring your own advantages to the boat and your own energies, which I've already addressed in previous podcasts. And you are an equal member of the team. As far as I'm aware, there's no boat that runs any differently to that. But it is important as around the world that you acknowledge that as around the world, that you are going to be one of the people that's on the boat all the time and is required to put in that extra effort. Your skills, skill sets should be better because you're spending more time on the water. Your familiarity with the boat and with the crew and with dietary requirements and engineering and sails and how to repair them, everything like that. Um, you know, what's involved in sponsorship sales in port, which have to be done as part of the um, sponsorship agreements that are um, relevant to any large sporting event. So there's an awful lot that you need to be able to lead on. Um, and as around the world on a sponsorship sale, you will effectively be playing in large part, probably the role of you know sort of a first or second mate on a normal clipper uh, corporate day in the Solent. So, you know, you are relied upon almost as professional crew. So, um, you know, your, your, your skill set will be good after a few legs and you'll be expected to... Um, to be part of the team um, disadvantages expense of course and my experience if you're going to spend two or three days in a in a nice-ish hotel in most of the ports you might be looking at something like what 15 stopovers something like that and, and, and if you're in if you're in hotels with 10 or 12 of those for three days say three nights plus you know a couple of steak meals and maybe a couple of nights where you have a few beers and um, mobile phone bills and um, a few jaunts here and there and all the rest of it, um, you're probably going to be spending about £12,000, I would say, in, in the year. And that's assuming you spend time on the boat as well. It's only a few nights in port. Dependent on your budget, you might find that very achievable. You might be choosing to spend your time in port on a boat uh, in which case that's fine but um, as around the world that becomes quite hard work in my experience I, I do like a nice hotel and certainly in the hotter ports or the colder ports where it's either very hot or very cold on board and the boat is a working boat so there's lots happening boards are up deep cleans being done everything else living on board is very doable uh, but it is um, it doesn't give you any respite from the work uh, if you're there and sails arrive, you're going to be helping to load them up onto the boat. If food arrives and you live on board, you're going to be there, um, you know, preparing the food for the for the, um, for day bags. So unless you get away from the boat, in my experience, you end up working all the time. And for a year, that's that's quite hard work. So um, if you want to manage your time and have some managed time away from the boat in a hotel, you're going to have to pay for that. Uh, and as I say, I used to stay in relatively nice hotels subject to budget just because it was nice to actually get away and, and have a hotel with facilities and and a nice room to chill out in, um, Wi-Fi and all the rest of it. So that's really a personal thing. So expense, obviously, actually, the race ticket itself, for want of a better word, is not cheap as around the world. Um, it's probably probably better value for money per mile. Um, and it's obviously an, 
a fantastic thing to have done at the end of the day to have circumnavigated on a race boat and um, if you're one of the fortunate few that ends up on the winning race boat of course even more uh, um, rewarding but um, yeah it's going to be expensive um, there's going to be those added costs to think about um, you may have costs of flying friends and family out to visit you or family anyway to visit you in stopovers that's going to be pricey you're not always going to be available for them when they're here either because if the boat is damaged and needs repairing or needs some significant maintenance and it's running behind schedule you're going to be expected to help and whilst of course everybody will try and plan around it you have a requirement to get the boat ready for the next start line and as around the world well it's in your interest of course you you're not going to want to rock up to a boat that can't leave because it's not ready and um, that's ruined your race so um so bear that in mind stopovers are primarily for the boat and secondarily for crew and for crew's family and friends that's my view anyway um what else is around the world well yep you're going to miss your family and friends you're uh, you know you might see some of them some of the time but it's going to be it's going to sometimes you're going to have those odd lonely moments i'm sure i can't be the only person who's had times you know on your own in a hotel room um sick and tired of uh, or tired and 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 sick of you know endless partying or whatever which can happen if you're if you let it um and it can be a bit lonely especially around christmas and uh, those times of the year um and if you have family or friends that are taken ill that's obviously very hard to deal with and um it brings its own challenges um in terms of the advantages, well, you know, you you just sailed around the world. You're a circumnavigator. Um, that's pretty good. That's up there with you know, scaling Everest. Or, in fact, it's 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 there is there are more people, as famously said, many more people that have scaled Everest and have sailed circumnavigated the planet. So um, you know, you have achieved something very significant. You will have a lot of stories that you can tell and anybody that's been in a pub with me over the last eight years will know that um i am quite prepared to tell them so um and bore you to death so uh, yep yeah, that's um always fun to have uh, those stories to um, keep you warm in your old age um the whole experience of racing these boats is is just great fun physically they're very powerful boats um and in big weather they really pick up the skirt and they you know they fly um you're pushing your comfort zone certainly earlier in the race um as a non-sailor you'll be pushing your comfort zone and um within the parameters of the crew the skipper is going to be trying to win the race um together with the crew so you know it is a race um you're going to see some some big seas you're going to see some um you're probably going to you know as i say hit the comfort zone and probably get a bit scared from time to time um once or twice in the race if if you know if circumstances collude um and that's all part of it that's all part of pushing through and getting on with things um and, and i felt from a personal perspective that was really one of the big things i came back on the race even though of course you have rows and falling outs and all the rest of it i came back from the race in 11 12 feeling a lot more positive about humanity than when i left um, I think that says a lot about humanity, about me, and also about the race. I thought it was, um, you know, it's a band of brothers time, really. Um, certainly from my perspective, uh, that's how I felt. Um, and there are people on the boats that I raced with that I will always consider to be very close friends who've sh shared significant moments in our lives. So um, as a round-the-worlder, if you can afford to do it, um, I would thoroughly recommend it. I would also say, as a round the world, that coming to it, if you've got issues in your own life, um, uh, this is sometimes a great sort of um, bookend to um, to things. I, you know, whatever that might be, personally um, or professionally, or you know, perhaps you've retired and you want to go and do something for yourself. Um, but you can't rely on this race to be um, a panacea for everything. Um, you know, it's a challenge and it needs to be treated as such. And as around the world, and I'll probably close on this, I would thoroughly recommend that you seriously think, but even before you leave, what you're going to do when you come back from the race, because it is very easy to come back from this full-on, just high-octane experience 
and you've done something very special and to some extent you've probably been the center of attention with lots of people wanting to talk to you in ports and um you know champagne receptions and uh, podiums and all the rest of it um maybe talking to the media in your home port and it's all very glamorous and um alluring and then when you come back there's the coming homecoming party and then hopefully is around the world you're going to help the skipper to uh, decommission the boat and give it back to clipper and then within a few days that's it everybody just it's a bit like if you went to university the last few days of university you suddenly realize that's it end of a chapter jump in your car get on the train go home to your uh, long forgotten flat or house and suddenly think oh well what do i do now um you might not have an awful lot of money in the bank um you might be lucky enough for that not to be a problem but it's not unknown um in my experience anyway it's not unknown for people to get the blues and to just if they haven't got a plan to just think right well what am i going to do now so i think have a plan for what you're going to do when you get back it might start with three days personal admin and two weeks holiday sounds stupid but believe me you'll probably quite enjoy lying on the beach for a week or two when you get back it might be that you're going to do your yacht master ticket if you're around the world you might think right i'm going to do some training and i'm going to take my yacht master ticket because that's achievable um if you've been using your time wisely whilst racing um but it should be something i think to kick start you into a routine because without routine, many people, especially when they're used to it, and when they're used to a routine on a boat and from port to port, I think that can that can edge you into a little bit of I wouldn't call it depression, but you know, just into into getting the blues, a little bit of lack of focus, not knowing quite where to go next. And you can waste a lot of time. I know of two or three people that have wasted an awful lot of time knocking around, really not knowing what they're going to do after the race. So um, try and have a plan get yourself started get into a routine and go for your next your next big challenge um i i cannot say anything other than recommend the race either as a legger or around the worlder um i'm a total enthusiast for it both initially when i signed up as a as a mate effectively with around the world crew on the 11 12 uh then in my time as a freelance training mate and skipper um in gosport and then subsequently um uh it, you know in the last few years just working with new race crews and and um and uh, and also as my my short time as a race skipper three months as race skipper on cv27 team garmin in the 13 14 race so um i'm a big enthusiast i think if you've signed up for it you've got a rough idea what you're going to get it'll exceed those expectations both in terms of some of the hardships you'll experience and the highs that you'll experience I think you've, uh, you know, if you're excited by this, you are going to absolutely love it. Be aware, it's going to be tough from time to time. You've got to stick at it. You've got to focus. You've got to put into this race as much as you want to take out. There's no half measures. It's full on. It's a competition. It's a, it's a competitive race. Um, and it's in large parts of hostile environments around the world so you really got to focus on this you can't do it any half measures get on with it and you'll absolutely love it so that's it that's the round the world uh, pros and cons i uh, hope that uh, if you've got any comments as round the world that you would like to make as a former around the world please do add them to the comments section both on anchor fm uh, by sending us a voicemail or alternatively on the fierce turtle youtube channel in the comments section uh, i am planning over time to put a uh, kit list in the description box below so if you want to click on that it'll take you through to a um, suggested kit list for around the worlders and um, if there's anything on that list that you would like to buy or you plan to buy if you click on it, it take you to amazon or another affiliate link and uh, if you buy it uh, then uh, amazon pay me a few pence for each link um, it costs you no more you pay the same as you would if you were just shopping there directly so um uh, i hope this has been of some use to you thank you very much for listening and at 24 and a half minutes i'm going to sign off on this episode um there will be other episodes in the future on different parts of training and the race itself so please do subscribe or follow on youtube uh, or um or uh, visit fierceturtle.co.uk thanks again